In this video, I will explain how to find an optimal solution to a transportation problem by using the stepping stone method. So let's consider this following example. Let's say we have three factories that produce some good, and we have four cities that have a demand for that good. So for example, factory one produces a total supply of 35 units of this good. Factory two produces a supply of 50, and factory three produces a supply of 40. Similarly, city one has a demand of 45 units for this good. City 2 has a demand of 20, City 3 has a demand of 30, and City 4 has a demand of 30. One thing we'll notice about this problem is that the total supply is 125, and the total demand, so if you add up all these demand values, it's also 125. So this is a balanced transportation problem. The demand is equal to the supply. Now, when we're trying to solve a transportation problem like this, the idea is we want to fulfill the demand, but we want to do so by minimizing the shipping cost. So I've written the shipping cost per unit in the bottom right hand corner of each of the cells. So for example, to ship one unit from factory one to city one, that has a unit shipping cost of $8. Now, when we're solving this type of problem, there are three methods that we can use to come up with something called an initial basic feasible solution. And that is the least cost method, the northwest corner method, and Vogel's approximation method. Now, I've made videos on how to use each of those methods, and I'll link to them in the description. For this example, let's assume that we used the least cost method to come up with an initial basic feasible solution. Now I've written this solution within each of these cells. So using that method, for example, we ship 15 goods from factory one to city one, we ship 20 goods from factory one to city two, and so on. Under this method, the total shipping cost is $1,080. Now this is an initial solution, but to determine if this is the optimal solution, in other words, the minimum shipping cost, we can use the stepping stone method. So here's how this method works. For each of the unallocated cells in this table, we're going to draw a closed loop using only vertical and horizontal lines in which the vertices of the loop are only touching allocated cells. So that was a mouthful, but let's consider what that actually means. If we consider this cell right here, this is an unallocated cell. There are no goods currently being shipped from factory one to city three. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to write from factory one, I'll abbreviate it F1, to city three, I'll abbreviate it C3. If we start at this cell, let's see if we can draw a closed loop where we only touch other allocated cells. So if we start at this cell, notice we could draw a line to this cell, which is an allocated cell, then a vertical line to this cell, then a horizontal line to this cell, and back to our starting cell. So we've drawn a closed loop in which we're only touching allocated cells. Now what we do is we draw alternating plus and minus signs to each of the cells in that loop. So our initial cell gets a plus sign, the next cell in the loop gets a minus sign, the next cell is a plus sign, and the last sign is a negative sign. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the unit shipping costs. So for example, we have a 10 right here and it has a plus sign with it. So we're going to add all of the shipping costs according to their signs that they have. So we'll say 10 minus eight plus nine minus 13. So let's go ahead and write that down here. 10 minus 8 plus 9 minus 13. That turns out to be negative 2. Now we're going to repeat that process for every unallocated cell in the table. So for example, let's consider this cell. This is another unallocated cell. So this is factory 1 to city 4. So let's write F1 to C4. Okay, so again, we're going to start at this cell and we're going to draw a closed loop in which we're only touching allocated cells. So if we start from this cell, we can move down to this cell, then to here, here, then to here, up here, and then back to our starting cell. So again, we're going to draw plus and minus signs in alternating cells. So plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, and then back to the plus sign. So that was our closed loop. So let's go ahead and add the shipping costs based on the plus and minus signs. So we have nine, minus five, plus 16, minus 13, plus nine, minus eight. So let's write that down here. Nine, minus five, plus 16, minus 13, plus nine, minus eight. That all turns out to be a positive eight. Now we're going to repeat this process for all of the unallocated cells. So we're going to find this closed loop for each of the unallocated cells. So I'm gonna go ahead and write those out. All right, so after we form a closed loop for each of the unallocated cells, we then look at all of these values and we say, are there any negative values? And we can see that there are. So there's one negative value right here and another negative value right here. 
So what that tells us is that we are not at the optimal solution for this transportation problem. So to work towards the optimal solution, here's what we do. Pick the largest negative value, so that would be this negative value right here, and focus on that cell. So that's factory one to city three. So this cell right here, what we're going to do is form a closed loop once again with this cell where we're only touching allocated cells. So the loop that we can use is we can draw a line to here and then to here and then to here and then back. And once again, we're going to draw plus and minus signs in alternating cells. So this cell gets a plus sign, this one gets a minus, this one gets a plus, and this one gets a minus. Now what we're going to do is only look at the cells with minus signs. So this cell and this cell. Between these two cells, which one has the minimum value? Well, that would be this cell with 15. So what we're going to do is subtract 15 from the two cells that have a negative sign and add 15 to the two cells that have a plus sign. So if we subtract 15 from this cell, this just becomes zero. If we subtract 15 from this cell, this becomes a five. If we add 15 to this cell, it becomes 15. And if we add 15 to this cell, this becomes 45. So what we're going to do using these updated values is we're going to calculate these closed loops once again for all of the unallocated cells. So I'm gonna delete this and make a little bit of room. Okay, so I've updated the values in the table. Now, once again, we're gonna focus on all of the unallocated cells. So let's start with this cell right here. So factory one to city one. We're going to draw a closed loop where we only touch the allocated cells. So if we start at this cell right here, we can move to here, then here, then here, then back to our starting cell. Now remember, we use alternating plus and minus symbols in each of those cells. And then we add the unit shipping costs using these plus and minus symbols. So in this case, we will have eight minus 10 plus 13 minus nine. So let's go ahead and write that down here. Eight minus 10 plus 13 minus nine. That turns out to be two. Then for our next unallocated cell, we'll repeat that process. So that's factory one to city four. So again, let's form a closed loop touching only the allocated cells. So if we start here, we can move down to this allocated cell, then to this one, then to here, and then back to our starting cell. So again, we'll assign plus, minus, plus, minus values. So for this one, it, when we add the shipping costs, we get nine minus five plus 16 minus 10. And that turns out to be 10. Now, we're just going to repeat this process for all of the remaining unallocated cells. All right, so after we perform all of those calculations, once again, we're going to look at all of the final values and say, are there any negative values? And we can see that there is a negative value. So we have still not reached an optimal solution. So we're going to focus on this cell right here, factory three to city two. So that's this unallocated cell right here. And again, we're going to draw a closed loop where we only touch allocated cells. So if we start here, we could draw a vertical line up to this allocated cell, then to this cell, then to this cell, and then back to our starting cell. So again, if we assign plus, minus, plus, minus, let's first only look at the minus cells. So that would be this one and this one. Between these two, which one has the lower value? Well, that would be the 10. So we're going to subtract a 10 from both cells that have a minus sign. So this 20 becomes a 10, and this 10 becomes nothing, it's zero. And then we're going to add 10 to each of the cells with a plus sign. So this cell becomes 25 and this cell becomes 10. Now using these updated values, let's calculate these loops again and see if we have finally reached an optimal solution. So again, I'll delete these calculations to make a little room. All right, so I've updated the values in the table. Now, once again, let's look at the unallocated cells and draw a closed loop for each of them. So we'll start with this first unallocated cell. Factory one to city one. Let's draw a closed loop where we only touch allocated cells. So we could draw a horizontal line to this cell, then this one, then this one, then back to the starting one. And once again, we'll use plus, minus, plus, minus. So if we add the shipping costs using the plus and minus signs, we get eight minus 10 plus 13 minus nine. And that turns out to be two. Now we're just going to repeat this process of finding closed loops for each of the remaining unallocated cells. All right, so after we perform these calculations on each of the unallocated cells, we'll find that none of these values are negative, which means we have arrived at the optimal solution. So now to find the total shipping cost, what we have to do is take the number of goods in each allocated cell and multiply it by the unit shipping cost. So 45 times $9, and then we'll do plus 10 times $6, plus 10 times $9, plus 25 times $10, plus five times $13, 
plus 30 times $5. So here's what that comes out to. The total shipping cost is $1,020, which we can see is less than the total cost that we found using the least cost method. So that is how we can fulfill the demand of each city by minimizing the total shipping cost using the stepping stone method.